In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear good people, it is Saturday, the 11th day of... 11th day of September in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2021. I am so happy because uh, I've, I've received a lot of response from our gracious Catholic women and... Uh, I'm so happy that uh, uh, you have taken the message so well and you have taken the charge graciously because it is always important that we hear some truth, hard truth, always important because I know all of us would want to do something good. St. Paul says that uh, sometimes he, won't, he would want to do something good but he finds he, himself doing always the opposite. Sometimes it happens. So gracious ladies, if you want to keep that identity of a Catholic woman, there will be a time that you can be able to, to sleep off or digress. For you to keep the trajectory pointed, what are you supposed to do? There are so many things you can do. But I want to just to mention what you need to avoid. And the thing that you need, you need to avoid are the ones that will make you shine as a Catholic woman association. Because in the event you fail to avoid them, you might end up as a decorated pagan. <laughs> We don't want to ever hear that our Catholic women are being called decorated pagans. No, we don't want. But we know if we give the devil that leeway, we might end up missing the point. Number one, spiritual arrogance. Now, this is sad news. And especially to our Catholic women who are fanatics, others extremists, kabisa kabisa extremists, and they think that they are so holy than everybody else on earth, so holy to the extent that they can give God retreat, because they are so good. They go for retreats, they go for deliverances, they go for everything, pilgrimages, so they think that the other women are just, are just nothing. And even when they are talking, they talk as if walifika kitabo. There is something for the CK calls the kufika concept when he is discussing about the, the enemies of priesthood and marriage. The kufika concept. There are those who forget that our destiny is the beatific vision. And simply because they do a few things in church, they think that the other women are nothing. That is not right. Avoid spiritual arrogance. Even if you are just that woman who is just holy and doing so much in church, the best you can do, remember, you are an evangelist. Your work, if truly, 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 if truly, 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 mm -hmm, if truly, 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 you know who Jesus is, allow that Jesus to attract others to you. But if your Jesus is repelling people away from you, then there is a huge problem. Huge. Chances are you are one of those arrogant, spiritually arrogant Catholic women. That even in your association, in your church, you behave as if you are an angel and the others are devils. That is not right. That's not right. That is not right. Number two, poor hardening of marital conflict. Poor hardening of marital con uh, conflict. You always, always have some issues in your marriages. And please know, as a Catholic woman, and in the Catholic Women Association, your association is not your number one. Your association is your marriage. 
please do not ruin your marriage because of the Catholic Women Association. I have had complaints from men who tell me, Father, my wife goes to church on Sunday, mass is at 10, and she comes home at 6 p.m. Then you are wondering, she goes to church at 10 and goes home at 6? Was there an agreement? Nothing. Does it happen all the Sundays? Yes. There is no church that has a program like that. Unless she is running away from something. Or she is just another... Uh, she is maybe... Maybe she is a fanatic, a, a, a fanatic. If your husband is complaining because of how you are handling your CWE affairs, you need to call a meeting between you and yourself. If at home there is a problem because of the activities that you have in the Catholic Women Association, you need a meeting. If you are a Catholic woman, as a, in, in, if you are a Catholic woman and you are in the association of CWA, and your family is complaining through and through, please do something about it. Please do. You cannot break your marriage to keep your CWA status. You can't. You can't. You are not number one a Catholic member, woman of the association. You are first a wife and a mother to some, to some human beings. Attend to them first. Even if it means not joining Catholic women association. You don't have to be a member. No, you don't. In fact, you need your marriage more than you need that membership. So if you have a problem balancing the two, drop one. And you cannot drop being a wife. Neither can you drop being a mother unless you have a problem. And mostly a mental problem. If you don't, if your marriage is breaking, and I want to say this in a brutal day right, and I want to say it shouting. If your marriage is breaking because of that association, because of you are not able to balance them, you can do two things. You can seek the wisdom of your priests, and especially your parish priest. Seek his wisdom on how to navigate the market waters. And depending on what the priest... There is, I know there is no priest in the world. There is no priest in the world who will tell you to continue injuring your marriage because of the CWA. I am sure your priest will tell you that um, number one as a priority is your marriage. Gracious ladies, I know I love the Catholic faith. And I have always said, I'm a proud Catholic priest. Very proud. And I would want everybody to be so. But again, unlike Father C.K. who is an ordained minister to be in church forever, you are not an ordained minister to be in church forever. And I have said this in the past. Kanisa iko na wenyewe. Na wenyewe ni sisi. Sio nyinyi. Go to your husband and children. Go cook for them. Stay there. Don't come and uh, hang around the, in, the, in the halls, in the offices. You are in the church compound the whole day. Are you a security guard? No. Kanisa iko na wenyewe. Na ni sisi. <laughs> After mass, if there is no, if there is a meeting, there is no meeting that takes the whole day. And even if there, there is, it cannot be a meeting every Saturday. No. Apana, 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 apana. Number three, internal cannibalism. Internal cannibalism. Where members eat one another. As in where members bring down one another. It is called internal cannibalism. 
And I have, uh, I did mention it in some numbers, uh, I think on Wednesday. Number four, too much culture. Culture is good. Culture is because we are son and daughters of our own culture. And we were first cultural beings before we became Christians. Having said that, please do not allow culture to come again and, um, and destroy the path you have taken of faith. Number five. Casual indifference. Now, there is one extreme and the other extreme. Too much culture and of, again, refusing to be, to be guided by uh, the casual dictates that we have in our culture. We cannot remain casual, casually indifferent. And again, we want to remain good Christians and in this context, Catholics. Number six, poverty mentality. Poverty mentality produces what we call in the Catholic faith, Jeras Tithers. A Jeras Tither is a Catholic woman who is poor in mind, but has money in her purse. She becomes a Jeras Tither. These are the women who calculate not from what they have. For them, they tithe depending on who is the parish priest. So if they do not like Father CK because he seems to be tall and very brown, <laughs> they, are not, they do not tithe. They don't tithe to tall priests who are brown. So they keep their money. Tomorrow they have Father Joshua, who is very black. And then they say that oh, we like black people because they onaka giza ya redemption. <laughs> so we can type to redeem them <laughs> no please there is nothing as dangerous as a jealous tither jealous tither in the catholic church very bad very bad i'll talk about that sometimes number seven limited catechetical knowledge limited catechetical knowledge we do not deepen our our, our catechism and even what we have, we don't even uh, develop it. Number eight, ecclesiastical tourism. Ecclesiastical tourism is a very bad habit with, uh, with some Catholic women. She is in the Catholic faith and in the Catholic association. But she is jumping from one church to the other. Not one Catholic to, to another Catholic. No. She is our member, but she is in all other churches. That is not ecumenism. Apana, it is called, uh, it is called ecclesiastical tourism, and it is bad manners. Number nine, addictions. Addictions. And here I'll talk about four. And these are what we are calling debatable scenes in the Catholic Women Association. And I want to request gracious Catholic women, when you meet, talk about those four issues. Number one, betting and gambling. Somebody thinks that betting is for men. It is not true. Betting now is creeping pole, pole slowly by slowly to, uh, uh, to women. So a good number of our women in the Catholic faith are in the betting business. And they are bringing their families down. Gracious ladies, discuss that. Number two, alcoholism. Tuko na walevi katika vikudi za wakatoriki, wakina mama wakatoriki. Walevi chaka, wamelewa kakabisa. We have them. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You didn't want Father CK to say that. I have just said it. And as you know, Father CK, I say it as it is. I told you that I'm not in the business of being liked or loved. I'm in the business of preaching the word of God. And if the word of God cannot touch and scratch us, then there's a problem. Discuss that, please. Addictions. We have got our members who are addicted to alcohol. Number three, masturbation. 
masturbation, please discuss it. And you cannot discuss masturbation away from pornography. That's number four. Gracious ladies, when you meet, don't just talk about the second coming of our Lord. That one is known. Discuss about the emerging issues that we need to discuss as Catholic Women Association. Please, talk about betting. I know to some of you it's a new concept. Betting is there and is bringing Catholic families down. And I told you something. When you see a Father CK saying something, please listen. Because I told you I'm not those priests who wake up to talk. No. Before I wake up to talk, I wake up to read. And I wake up to research. Please. And when I read and I research and I pray over it, I'll speak about it. I know it might save one soul. Please don't forget that I'm also in, in, in marriage therapy. So these are the issues that are eating our families. Betting with our Catholic women. Betting, alcoholism, masturbation, pornography. Discuss that. Finally, poor financial management. Poor financial management leaving you perpetually in debt. Perpetually. Madeni everywhere. Madeni everywhere. If that is not discussed, gracious ladies, you'll be in the Catholic faith and in the Catholic Women Association and you'll be down perpetually. You have got debts from every corner. Now to the extent you have started skiving or you have started now running away or withdrawing from the association. Not because there's something wrong, but because you cannot pay what you owe us. And as I said, some of you have gone to the extent of getting money from your priests. Loan. Loan. That is not right. Please allow your priests to be your ministers. Your priests have no time to keep on texting you and calling you to ask you when you will pay the loan. That time, ukieda kwa padre kukopa pesa, ukubuke padre hana pesa yake. Kama mekukopesha, ni pesa ya kanisa. Na ikipotea, the faithful members will not listen to the story. So, and I know there are so many priests who have been put on a very bad corner because this priest trusted this Christian. And because she is a lady and she seems so innocent and honest, then she, she defaults. What happens? Then the priest is left. It's the church money and it's not there. So today there are so many priests who are, who are facing it so hard and not because they, 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 they ate the money or embezzled the money. They didn't. It's only that they trusted somebody, somebody so much and then this Christian never paid. Gracious ladies, gracious ladies, if you owe your priest's money, please take back that money before you die because there could be some consequences. Can I tell you something? <laughs> because it is good. It is good. I tell you as it is. And it I said it in, in English and Swahili for you to get it. For those of you who are, who are taking a church money with an intention of never paying, whether from the priest or from the, the coffers. Today I'll tell you something as your priest. Because I know I hate corruption with all my heart. People who steal from the church never add up well. None of them will ever enjoy a happy death. If you didn't know, now you know. Where's your pesa zakanisa? Wanakufa kifo abacho hakina furaha hata kido. And I have said, 
A happy death is a gift that God gives to his people. And not to everybody. Happy death is not given to everybody. If you didn't know, now you know. So if you took some church money and you never paid for whatever reason, wewe ni mwizi. Wewe ni mwizi wa pesa za kanisa. If you conned your priest pretending to be a good Catholic uh, member, you are a thief. The priest is paying the money that was not used by him. And because he cannot tell the parish council what happened, now he is, he is agonizing in his own darkness and he is even trying to protect you. And the priest is protecting a thug because umekopa everybody, everybody. Very sad. Thank you. Thank you, gracious ladies. I come to the end of the lengthy, lengthy reflection on Catholic Women Association and what makes you to stand out as a Catholic woman. Next week, I'll be covering Catholic Men Association. Tomorrow, we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join me at exactly 8 in the morning for Holy Mass. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Saturday. Thank you.